So in this video I'm going to be talking a bit about the World Trade Organization and its role in promoting trade liberalization. Now the World Trade Organization it promotes two things. It promotes trade liberalization so as mentioned before, i.e. opening up the global market for trade and free market ideology. Uh, it does not belong to any country in particular arguably so it's a neutral organization it was set up in 1995 and it is responsible for 100 and uh, 157 countries these 157 countries including the UK US China India are responsible for 97% of world trade so it's a really important organization now it monitors it's the only organization which will monitor free trade However, there may be other organizations on a small scale which are promoting free market ideology and trade liberalization because they're promoting a belief. But this is the only organization to actually monitor the trade in the world, to sort out trade disputes, organize trade negotiations. And they base um, some of, and two of their main principles at which they base a lot of their rule making on is that if you um, block imports for example from one country uh, and you put tariffs on those imports then you can not only do it for one country you have to do it for all countries so that also promotes a bit of fairness and the second principle is that if if a country imports something the imports have to be treated exactly the same as domestically produced products you cannot uh, favoritize one in many ways however you know, countries still do um, put subsidies and things that favor their domestically produced goods. So why on earth should we have a world trade organization? Well, there are many things because by promoting world um, trade liberalization or free market ideology, basically more trade happens. And when more trade happens, the productivity of the world goes up. When productivity goes up, supply goes up, hence price falls. And when world price falls, consumer welfare increases. So for consumer welfare, the first point is. Second point is the more variety of product living standards goes up. Why is it that in the UK we have high living standards compared to in uh, Mozambique? Because in the UK we can buy coffee from this country, mangoes from India, uh, fried rice which was imported from China. We can we can buy like a variety of product and have the choice which other countries may not have. So it raises living standards. The third thing is it prevents protectionism. Now why isn't protectionism good? Well the main reason why protectionism good is because if countries are you know, doing their own thing self-sufficient, then there's a chance that they don't need any other countries. They're not relying on the other countries. Hence, it could start off, um, hence, if there was a dispute between two countries, they're more likely to go to war. For example, consumer welfare won't be that high. Uh, prices may be expensive. And there's an argument that why keep an industry alive in your country if it's not efficient, if it's basically not good compared to industry of the same product in other countries. And what we've also seen is since 1995, tariffs, protectionist policies, they've all fallen. Now, what does its role play in trade conflicts? Well, we've said that it plays a very important role in trade conflicts. It organizes trade negotiations, it gets countries together, it sorts out trade disputes, and it encourages actions which are promoting trade and free market, and then it condemns actions which are protectionist. Now, I'm going to give you an example of where the World Trade Organization actually failed. Now, as you may know, there was a Doha round of talks between 2001 and 2008. It was very famous talks, and it went and it collapsed in 2008 because basically there was no conclusion came. It got many countries, I'm not sure how many loads, and every year there was talks all over the place, Hong Kong, Germany, etc., obviously Doha, everywhere there were different talks. And what it was on was the fairness of agricultural imports, so how much you would pay developing countries for the imports and um, also the subsidies that um, these westernized countries would give to their domestic farmers because it's not being treated equally. Now, the four aims, I've got this from a website, 
I think it was either BBC or the World Trade, or you know, it was BBC. The four aims of the Doha um, trade talks were one to prevent protectionism, to try and find some way of two countries to sit together and sort out a way in which they do not need to rely on protectionist policies such as tariffs, subsidies, etc. In short, the second one is ensure trade liberalization. So, again, getting rid of protectionism like the first. Three, eliminate export um, subsidies. So, get rid of subsidies. This is again to do with eliminating uh, protectionism. And the fourth, set levels for farm subsidies in the developed world so that they're not continually increasing and they don't, domestic farmers don't have a better outlook than ones that um, are growing to be exported to the developed world. So this basically failed and I think it shows that the World Trade Organization doesn't always work. That's why I think it's an important video. Now I find that there are a lot of problems with the World Trade Organization and I've read um, Joseph Stiglitz's book Globalization and its Discontents and from what I remember is he worked in the World Trade Organization and basically he said it's a really corrupt organization and they take advantage they don't care about the poor layman, they don't care about consumer welfare, they just care about the top rich people in the developed world. That's the impression I got out of the book, but let's read some of the problems that are with the World Trade Organization. So the first is, now the World Trade Organization is too powerful. I mean, it's the only organization. If there are a violation of fair trade laws, it can force countries to change laws that's got a lot of power and that's one organization and if that organization has been some way bribed or manipulated then you know it can cause other countries to change their laws and there is an argument that is run by the rich for the rich so the rich remain with their protectionist policies the WTO says nothing but it forces the poor countries to open up the doors this is also in Joseph Stiglitz's book and the World Trade Organization doesn't care about exploitation, as mentioned before, morality of employing um, kids and stuff. It's all about free trade, free market, liberal um, ideology, getting the most uh, made. Adam Smith's theory, although he did care about morality, strange. They don't care about the environment, that increased globalized trade can lead to environmental problems because of the transportation, etc., etc. Does not even look at that health, education, development in countries not interested. Just the value of trade must go up. That is the sole thing it looks up. So it's very narrow minded. And a lot of the things happen behind back doors so the public don't really see it and the media can't really find out either and the media has no say. It and it doesn't really seem like a very democratic organization. And also there have been instances in the past where protesters have come up for various issues. So with the Doha rounds in 2003, I think there was protests. I'm not sure what year, but there have been protests with the Doha talks and stuff like that. Because, you know, it's, it takes up a lot of money and poor countries cannot even use the World Trade Organization to complain about the rich countries because the fees for putting up trade negotiations, etc., are so high and poor countries can't afford it. So it's not very helpful for them. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful for you and please visit my blog.